We haven't had you on Navarro before, so we've got a lot of catching up to do. So yeah. where where are we in terms of being the MP for Kensington? Okay. You know, how, how, what, how much is there still to be resolved when it comes to the aftermath of Grenfell? Hmm. There's still people not being housed, yeah, promises it's, broken. It's horrible. It's a really, really horrible. There are people who are rehoused and are, are feeling a bit better and getting their lives back on track, and I'm absolutely delighted for those who are. Um, we have uh, about 100 families on our books who are not. So they may be survivors or bereaved or evacuees who had to move out. And because they're so traumatized, and this isn't just, oh, they don't want to look at that. No, 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 no. They are genuinely, seriously traumatized. And I've heard some of the stories. Some of the children have stopped developing. Um, yeah. Physically. Ed educationally. Right. And emotionally. Um, and there's all kinds of other issues. Some are, are really quite frightening, and some people like, may never, ever recover. I genuinely think that, having spoken to... I work very closely with the NHS and the mental health services, um, substance, substance abuse. Um, uh, people, a lot of people are really, really struggling and finding, uh, finding ways to alleviate that in mm. ways which aren't healthy for them long term. Uh, but there's also a lot of people who are just really getting depressed, and after 15 months still in hotels, which some are. Some of them are moved around regularly. Okay. I spoke to somebody the other day who went back to, her, a young woman went back to her hotel and they said, oh, you haven't got a booking for tonight, here's your stuff. And they just handed oh. her, oh been into God. her room, cleared her stuff and just put it in bin bags. And she oh. had to go and find somewhere else and then call the council the next day and go through all that hassle. Um, and that's not the only time I've heard that quite a few times because there's just mismanagement there and a lack of care, actually. Mm. Um, and some of the housing officers are getting fed up and angry and saying, oh, if you don't take this flood, then you don't love your children, and really awful things, um, really quite shocking. Um, and um, as I say, people are in very, very poor mental health um, and not being looked after as they should. And that, I, it's shameful. It really is shameful. I'm ashamed, actually, to be part of a political system which has allowed that to happen, and, and I feel so frustrated that there's very little I can do because I can go and talk to the Secretary of State for whichever department it is, and they sit there and they listen, and go, oh, that's awful, I just didn't know that, Emma, and they write then it's and really nothing happens. I find it really frustrating. I'm there, and I should be championing them, and I am. It's very hard to make any change. There was a piece by the LRB recently mm. about Grenfell Tower, yeah. and um, it was written by Andrew O'Hagan, mm. and he said that one of the reasons why many of these people haven't been rehoused is because they're looking for the best deal and they're yeah, sort of saying okay. that they're homeless. They're, I cool. mean, obviously, how, how does that make you feel? Because that, for me, it almost feels like it's feeding into the most reactionary, right-wing things. I know, and one of the issues is that... Um, he came out and he talked to an awful lot of people on the ground and a lot of people really opened up to him yeah. um, uh, in a way that they hadn't to anyone else. And mm. people tell me anything because they know me. Trust me, that's, that's one thing. But they opened up to him in the same way and he then turned it into a publication. Um, and then rather than supporting them, he, he the, the, his attitude flipped at some point and people don't understand why. And I quite, I genuinely, um, there was um, one of the, a, a bereaved woman I saw in the street one day. Um, this wasn't unusual, actually. And um, she came up to me and she just started sobbing. And she said, you know, you know, he, I, I talked to him and I don't know who she, oh, she's talking about Andrew Hagen. And she was sobbing and said, I can't, I couldn't believe what he did after I told him my story, because mm. I told him things I haven't even told you. Mm. Um, and this is somebody I'd known a long time before. And she's absolutely distraught, saw it as a betrayal. It's exploitation, right? These are <laughs> super vulnerable people being exploited by a supposedly yeah. progressive journalist. Well, yes, exactly, exactly. Um, uh, we had a meeting, a public meeting about it. People were really upset. About 70 people came wow. to a public meeting to discuss that publication wow. and what wow. had happened and how he turned it around because he talked to some of the um, former councillors and decided they were actually good sorts. Well, because they're like him, right? They're sort of like basically affluent. Mm. Or how I'd like to patrician. be other name. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Progressive and, uh, right wingers. Uh, yeah, and it, it, it's shocking. We've had so many people come into the area and try to exploit it in all kinds of different ways, even if they think they're being caring, they're actually there for themselves mm. and not for the people who need it. And that's really difficult. They don't even recognise it themselves sometimes. What do you mean by that? Like, if you can be more specific? 
Uh, there are people who actually have, have gone there because they need to be needed. Mm, okay, I see what you mean. Mm. So it's all paternalistic. I can't, and there's some people who are very genuine in all kinds of ways. So well, I've given up my job to look to look after these people. And I thought, hmm, how's your family coping with that then? Yeah. But they need to be needed. And um, uh, yeah, it's, it's really complicated. And the reason that is happening is because the right help isn't there. Mm hmm. It's a question for sort of everyone here, uh, related. So when Grenfell, when that fire first happened, there was really sort of a sense that politics had changed. Mm. You know, it was it was just uh, a tragedy that seemed to demonstrate mm. all the problems of ignoring people who were yeah. poor, fundamentally, mm. and of outsourcing responsibility for public services and public housing, and of a society where in the centre of a rich city, poor people are treated with contempt because ultimately the powers that be want them to move so that that land can go to someone who can pay more for it. And, you know, there was obviously that tweet where Clive Lewis said, was it burn neoliberalism or something like that? Burn neoliberalism, burn, not people. Yeah, so there was this idea that, yeah, this yeah. was a watershed moment in mm. politics. Mm. And I don't know if you think that that's something that was not, or that was a a moment that looked like it could have been a shift in British politics mm. and never quite arrived? Or do you think there has been a, an effect? I, there has been, actually. There really has been. And it's being smothered. It is happening. It is out there. It is happening. The communities around there have got very powerful, very articulate. They're self-educating, self-organising. Um, and all the different groups I've I've met or have communicated with all over the country who are doing different bits of work, cladding over here, architecture over here, there's loads of it. It is shifting. But what has happened is, again, using the council as a microcosm, the council have quadrupled their media comms department and they put out fabulous press releases every day. They think, oh, everything's great. Everyone's, oh, you know, it's, it looks so good. And and uh, similarly, the government, they're kind of, they're drowning it out. They've, got, they've hardened towards it. They've hardened towards the whole issue of, of Grenfell. Um, and they're trying to they're trying to spin their way out of it. They're trying to get rid of it. I've been trying to get a backbench debate on all the Grenfell issues for about uh, eight months now, um, and I hit a brick wall all the time. So I've got eighty Labour MPs are signed up. Mm. We've got five Conservatives, and these are people who all stood up in Parliament and spoke very movingly about the things they were concerned with, but they won't sign. Um, they won't sign the paper to to uh, support a motion uh, to have a debate about it. Why? Um, uh, well, I was told that there, there were two things that could topple the government last year. Yeah. One of them was Kensington going red, <laughs> and the other one was Grenfell. Um, so I don't know whether or not that's true, but it has actually made a massive difference, and it's up to everybody to make that happen, actually. But it's being drowned out by the right-wing press and by the most incredible media comes um, system that that is 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 smothering it mm. but it is there it has happened it is happening yeah i think like in response to your question like nationally i think it's like really frustrating because at, at the time i remember like it it being kind of like everyone just assuming that that's what was going to happen that was going to mm. bring down the government or whatever yeah and although like it, in my head i remember thinking like i I don't like if they are still in power. Like I don't understand what it could take to like make them like not cling on anymore. Like as long mm. as they're still there, like they've got the power basically. Mm. Um, but it's just it's just mad how kind of quickly everyone moves moves on. Like not kind of willingly per se, but like mm. things just move dead fast and like yeah, everything... the press have moved on. And yeah, the, and the, and the media comes have moved on. Yeah, but it's still happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and there are still people mobilising out there and and uh, you know self learning and all, you know they they are getting they're getting ready out there um for uh, different ways of working and there are a lot of different groups i've spoken to the RIBA the uh, Royal Institute of British Architects um and the um <coughs> association of insurers and all kind all these people are shifting the yeah. way things work all of them are but it's not being acknowledged because the, because it's trying to, you know, people in authority are trying to drown it out. Yeah. But it is happening. 